Hey Jeff, where are we off to next? Hockenheim. Oh no. So practice didn't quite go to plan. We uh, had a little bit of a spin here and uh, couldn't quite keep it out of the wall. So uh, sorry guys. And now coming through the field on fresh tyres, we're going around the outside of Kevin Magnussen. And uh, that's Pierre Gasly up ahead. He's down a long way in this field. And uh, as we go around the outside of Gasly, we've been turned around into the wall. No, never mind, that was just a dream. That didn't happen. I've had a chat with Carl about the new parts, and we're happy that they've been integrated into the car, okay? With any luck, you'll be able to feel the improvement, so give them a try. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my F1 2019 career mode here today for the uh, German Grand Prix at the Hockenheim Ring. And we've been given an objective over the next two races to finish fourth in qualifying. So that is uh, going to be a very difficult task I think given that uh, Hockenheim uh, is not my strongest track and I, I really don't think Hungary uh, will suit this car at all so we'll give it a try but uh, I, I don't see I don't see that being very likely but uh, anyway uh, we have an upgrade or sorry an update to uh, the R&D and uh, what stands out on that chart is that Renault have done pretty much nothing since France so uh, they are falling uh, back uh, towards uh, Toro Rosso, uh, Alfa Romeo and Williams who have made some uh, really good upgrades uh, over the past uh, few races. We're still fifth in uh, the overall uh, standings sort of battling away for uh, best of the rest with Haas but uh, in general Haas haven't really shown up and uh, it's the McLarens that are uh, pushing uh, pushing us, uh, if anything, uh, out of the midfield teams, but really we're almost up with Red Bull. Red Bull are really underperforming, and uh, on occasion they're struggling to beat the McL McLarens and, the, and uh, myself and my teammates, so uh, we'll continue our fight with them today, hopefully, but uh, we've got uh, the upgrade to the chassis side weight reduction, so that will help us uh, around all of the corners, and, uh, well, in just about every way. Uh, acceleration braking it should just be uh, an all-round sl uh, slightly better car our aero is uh, still very good fifth best uh, to Renault of uh, all teams so uh, I'm not sure they must be uh, losing a lot uh, on the chassis uh, and engine side but uh, Ferrari have jumped up to second uh, on the engine side they've been working hard uh, in that department but uh, let's see how all that plays out in practice Welcome to a wet Germany for today's practice session here at the world famous Hockenheim Ring. This four and a half kilometre track is steeped in history and has been the scene of many special races over the years. We're expecting the session to start within the next few minutes. And I tell you what, Anthony Davidson, I think we're going to have some fairly anxious drivers in the cars today as the conditions have not been kind at all for today's session. Well, sat in the garage, maybe, I suppose. I mean, you'd always rather a nice dry circuit to run on, but as soon as you venture out onto the track, then any lingering nerves get left behind. The moment you start to become anxious in these cars, you tend to tighten up and become too digital in your inputs. This can not only cost you lap time, but also, if you're unlucky, send you on a one-way trip to the wall. OK, here's something to remember about this circuit. Make sure you practice a few different lines through the hairpin. If you're fighting with another car through there, you might find yourself side by side all the way through seven and into the braking zone of turn eight. Thanks for that, Jeff. So uh, practice one was, uh, it rained the whole time, so there was nothing really to do. OK, test complete, and that was a very good job indeed. We got a lot of valuable information out of that. Uh, as far as practice for the qualifying in the race, so uh, I never really tried to set a competitive lap time. And as you can see uh, on the results here, we are down in uh, 19th only ahead of uh, the Williams of George Russell. So uh, we have some serious pace to find and uh, hopefully that comes back in the dry. But uh, like I said, I didn't really try too hard to, to set that competitive lap. It's time to remind ourselves of our top three. 
who are the scientist, Bethel, and Valtteri Bottas. Sadly, it's time to say... Well, that'll do. Great work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. You really put a lot of effort into practice today. Are you testing new components? Yeah, we've got a, a few tweaks to the car this weekend, so uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we were getting the results we should have. You were flying in practice. Do you think you can carry this over to qualifying? Yeah, I'm not sure what everyone everyone else was doing, what programs are running, but we sort of went all out, so we'll see. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Je uh, Jeff. That's not Jeff, that's Claire. Anyway, let's uh, get into the qualifying session now. It's going to be dry, so uh, that's good. Our car was uh, much better in the dry, so let's just get into it. Welcome back to qualifying, where we're waiting for the lights to turn green in the pit lane to signify the start of the session here at the Hockenheim Ring for this weekend's German Grand Prix. Now then, Anthony Davidson, you're not getting any younger, but you have been involved in your fair share of qualifying sessions in a, an illustrious 30-year career. How do you deal with the pressure when you have that one chance to deliver a perfect lap? It's not so much about dealing with the pressure, it's more about how you approach the risk and just how much of it are you willing to take. You're constantly balancing the car on the edge of grip from braking, cornering and traction. And over the course of a lap, it's easy to get that balance wrong. And that's why achieving the perfect lap is almost impossible. As you say, I've been doing this 30 years now, and it never gets any easier. Someone's noticed a leak in one of the coolant lines, so we're patching that up as we speak. Hold tight for now until we've checked everything over. All right, thanks. Um, you couldn't have noticed that in the last uh, couple of hours and fixed it then. Could you? Like, I mean, that's, uh, anyway. Um, we just passed through that. We'll lose uh, around qualifying most likely, but it probably won't make a huge difference getting through Q1. Is uh, mostly a formality uh, at this point, so long as we get our lap in without traffic. So uh, let's go. So on to our lap, and uh, coming uh, across the line, we set uh, a pretty decent lap. And uh, I was going on to set another one, and immediately cut the corner. But uh, thankfully, uh, the lap we set, we got through uh, MP. 13, so uh, only just getting through really, but uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Danny Kafir, Robert Kubica, uh, Kevin Magnussen, and uh, Antonio Giovinazzi uh, knocked out in this one, but uh, a good job by George Russell to get through there in the Williams car, and uh, indeed to our one as well, but uh, on to Q2 now, and uh, starting our lap, just about keeping it on the track through that first corner, it is uh, a surprisingly difficult corner and uh, maybe it's one of the reasons uh, I'm not a huge fan of this track. Missing the apex of uh, turns 2 slash 3 uh, there, and uh, that might have cost us a bit of time. So uh, now heading towards uh, the hairpin, we need to uh, make sure we get this right. We don't want to lose uh, too much more time. A little bit wide, but uh, not too bad there. And uh, we get the power down nicely, and I don't think we got slowed down too much by the curb there through uh, turn 7 and uh, into turn 8, another very tricky corner and uh, cutting that just about just about the right amount through to uh, the final sector now this is uh, the very tricky part of this racetrack for me and uh, in particular uh, the next few corners uh, after this one this little uh, left right section, I don't know why but uh, I've never really liked that section and so you can see I completely messed that up, went way too narrow and uh, ran wide but as we cross the line the time is there, it is actually pretty decent so uh, it didn't cost us too much time and uh, we get through in P6 so uh, that is a huge uh, confidence boost uh, for the rest of the uh, qualifying session. Sergio Perez once again uh, has not improved uh, in practice 2 from his practice 1 time and uh, he is out uh, of qualifying and uh, I'm actually beaten by uh, Lucas Weber in the McLaren so uh, he's doing uh, a brilliant job to uh, drag that uh, a good time uh, out of that car but uh, anyway that just shows that we didn't gain too much time by uh, running off uh, into the drag strip on that last corner but uh, Max Verstappen is only just uh, getting through 
to uh, Q3 once again. So uh, the Red Bull's really uh, lacking pace. But anyway, Nico Hulkenberg, Kimi Raikkonen, Alex Albon, Sergio Perez and uh, George Russell knocked out in this session. Let's get into Q3. So now in Q3, let's see where we can line up on the grid. I feel like this is a better chance to get that P4 uh, than what we would have uh, in Hungary. So I really need to make this session count because uh, to get that, we'll not only need to beat the Red Bulls, but we'll also need to beat uh, one of the Mercedes or Ferraris, and that is uh, a tall order. But uh, we'll see how this goes. We've uh, started the lap pretty well, I feel like. So uh, now into the hairpin. Maybe uh, overbraked a little bit there, but uh, just about got that right. And out of the hairpin, nice traction. And uh, now using all the road towards uh, turn seven, trying to get every tiny bit right. And into uh, turn eight, big cut there. So uh, I'm lucky uh, to even get away with that. And uh, in fact, I think uh, I got away with uh, a few uh, track extensions. That's a big cut there. But uh, I feel like that actually cost us time on the inside on the curve and the grass there. But uh, through this next section again, I just feel like I just cannot ever uh, get this right. I was way uh, too wide uh, around that whole section of corners and uh, got the angle for the last one all wrong. You're in the top ten now. Keep it up. So, uh, so far our fastest lap is a 114.2. The time is uh, just not there. We are. Uh, something like six tenths off the time we did in Q2 so we need to improve and we need to do that now on uh, our second run another new set of tyres on the car and uh, we are off uh, and uh, we've immediately gone purple to the first sector so uh, we must have had a really nice run there and uh, now into the hairpin getting that just about right getting on the apex and uh, using all these space on the exit that we're allowed to and uh, turn 8 again cutting that corner as much as uh, I feel like we could get away with and to the second sector what's it going to be it's a personal best so uh, this lap is coming together nicely you just need to get through the dreaded final sector and uh, this tricky section of corners here and uh, as we uh, do that we run wide uh, on the final two corners but hopefully that hasn't cost us too much time towards the finish line where are we going to start Fifth, one place away. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Hamilton, Vettel and Valtteri Bottas. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. Fifth place. We beat the Red Bulls. We beat Lucas Weber, but we couldn't beat uh, any of the Mercedes uh, or Ferrari cars. So that's unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it is. We'll need to try to get that P4 start uh, in Hungary. But uh, I can't complain. Fifth place is uh, much higher than I thought. Uh, I'd be qualifying Sergio Perez down out of the top 10. So uh, that is. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he can recover in this race. He managed it uh, uh, in the past few races where, uh, where he's had bad qualifying. So uh, hopefully he can recover. And. Uh, we can hopefully just hold our position. I don't think we'll be challenging the Mercedes and Ferraris, but we'll see. But uh, yes, Lucas Faber will be uh, very quick as well. So uh, he's my main focus uh, in this race, as well as Max Verstappen. So uh, let's get into the race. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. It's been a great qualifying session for you. Are you going to carry that momentum into the race? Yeah, I hope so. We've uh, qualified uh, more or less uh, as high as we possibly could, so hopefully we can hold it. Are you hoping to have your reliability issues sorted out before qualifying? Qualifying's finished. Um, uh, uh, are you okay? Qualif that, that was qualifying that we just had. Um... That's awkward. Well, thanks anyway. Okay. Well done. Very solid results. You're looking good for the race. All right, that was weird, but uh, anyway. Between uh, qualifying in the race, normally I don't do R and D, but uh, I think I put uh, one of the uh, quality control uh, upgrades on the chassis side, so uh, that will be uh, on the car instant. Oh. Not really on the car, on the factory uh, instantly, and 
uh, that will uh, be that should reduce the chance of uh, upgrades failing uh, in the near future. So uh, we need to do uh, a lot more work uh, on the chassis side to uh, get it competitive with the big three. So uh, anyway, let's get into the race. Good afternoon and welcome to a place that is very special to us all in the Formula One community. It's the Hockenheim Ring, home of the German Grand Prix. Always good for a close scrap is Hockenheim. Think back to Alonso, Ricardo, Vettel as recently as 2014 and I'm expecting some more strong racing today. It's 2.8 miles around the Hockenheim Ring then with an average lap speed in excess of 130 miles per hour. The long curved back straight leads into a tight hairpin for the best overtaking opportunity on the circuit. But there are plenty of other options available around the 17 corners here today. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the scientist. As with all the drivers at this level, they have a lot of ambition. But Formula One's a daunting step up from any other series, so expectations are high right from the start. And this is something that has ended the career of many a young driver, as that leap up to Formula One proves to be too much. But luckily in this case, I'd say they're doing a good solid job, and the risk the team took in signing them is definitely starting to pay off. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. With Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have... Bottas, Leclerc, The Scientist, and Faber, Butler, and Nico Hulkenberg, Raikkonen, Albon, Sergio Perez, and Russell, Norris, Fiat, Robert Kubica, and Kevin Magnussen. Giovinazzi and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. Thanks, Jeff. This is indeed the Mercedes-Benz Grosser Preis von Deutschland. I don't know if that's quite how you pronounce it, my German... It is non-existent, but uh, anyway, we're going to go with that for now. I had a, a brief look at the strategy, and uh, I looked at the hard tyres, but uh, as usual, they were not really an option. They're just they're just too slow, and uh, I feel like they're pretty much useless in this game. I used them once in Spain, and uh, even then, I feel like that was the wrong choice. But uh, anyway, let's uh, don't worry about that. We're not going to be using the hard tyres ever, and uh, we get underway for the formation lap. Get these softs. Launch map is good, but we need to learn the gears, so go into each one when you can. We're going to need some work on the brakes, so put some energy into them and warm the tyres as well, please. Get these soft tyres up to temperature, and uh, we need to get a good start here because we've got uh, some fast cars, Weber and the Red Bulls, uh, right behind us. So we're going to need to get uh, the best start we have all season. Uh, to try to stay ahead of them uh, throughout this race. So let's go. Keep an eye on the lights. <clears throat> the start sequence will begin as soon as the grid has formed. Be ready with the clutch. Thanks, Jeff. All right, we now go to three, four, five red lights. And the lights are out, and we are underway for the German Grand Prix. And uh, it is an okay start. Sebastian Vettel uh, is uh, under attack, and Bottas around the outside into the first corner and uh, Bottas might just get that. We'll see how that plays out over the next few corners. We've held our position. Bottas and Vettel still side by side uh, through turns two, three, and four here, and uh, they will uh, continue to battle away uh, into the hairpin. But uh, for now, it looks like Sebastian Vettel uh, has held the position. Bottas to the inside, and now to the outside of Sebastian Vettel. Where can we go in all this? We're gonna have a little look to the outside of Leclerc, but uh, this car does not have the grip that those first uh, Four cars in front of us do, and uh, we, we ran a bit wide there. But uh, meanwhile, behind us, Lucas Weber has also held his starting position. We go down the inside of Leclerc as he's held up, and uh, we went very deep there. And uh, I'm overestimating uh, the grip that this car has following uh, the much faster cars, but we do make that move on Leclerc. Here's the, the onboard uh, from Charles Leclerc. We just uh, sent it to the inside, and uh, 
we did get it stopped, but uh, only just Leclerc did well to uh, leave us the space there uh, down the inside, and uh, we managed to uh, hold that position. But uh, Vettel and Bottas are still battling side by side up ahead of us, and uh, Bottas is uh, on the inside, and he might just get that done there. But uh, just when you think it's over, um, we uh, lose that spot. DRS is now enabled and will be available to use when you are within one second of the car ahead in the DRS zone. Uh, we just lost that spot to uh, Charles Leclerc. So uh, yeah, uh, that was a bit of a mistake there on my part. But uh, anyway, what I was uh, saying is uh, just when you thought that battle was over between Bottas and Vettel, uh, Vettel was coming back. So uh, he's really not giving up and he's not going to be uh, beaten by the Mercedes here today uh, at his home race, uh, if he can help it. But uh, all the battling with Bottas and uh, that's uh, given Hamilton uh, a huge free kick. He's uh, got quite a lead now uh, in this race. But uh, yes, Charles Leclerc's got back past me and now I'm uh, under attack from Lucas Weber. And uh, he's going to go down the inside here into the hairpin. And uh, there's not much I can really do. I'm going to try and hold it around the outside. He leaves us some space there, thankfully. Reduce the ERS deployment, please. We need to charge the battery. Running out of battery power now, but we've got a good exit. And uh, around the outside of turn 7, we're almost banging wheels there. Down the inside into turn 8. And uh, we're side by side. And uh, we just about uh, hold on to that position. But uh, that was very close there with uh, Lucas Faber. But uh, thankfully... Uh, we were able to hold on to that and onto uh, our P5 in this race. But uh, these front tyres. Okay, two stops left now. Two stops, six laps until your pit window is open. Are absolutely melting, and uh, I was checking to see when our pit window was because I'm uh, I'm not enjoying this but these tyres at all. And you can see it. We're defending from Weber, and Gasly's hit him, and Gasly's around, and uh, he goes spinning out of this race and uh, out of contention. Um, I, I have to say I probably caused that defending from Weber. Here's the onboard, onboard from Verstappen. He was lucky to uh, have the reactions there. Virtual safety car is ending. Maintain your pace until the green flag. VSC ending. Wait for green. And uh, that caused a virtual safety car briefly. But uh, we get back underway. So yeah, I have to say, I probably caused that defending. Weber had to really back out of that corner. But at the same time, I don't know what Gasly was doing. But uh, Weber down the inside again, into the hairpin. And uh, this time, we can't fight back. Radio, maybe? No? Okay, no radio. But uh, yeah, we couldn't fight back that time. And uh, Weber's got us. So uh, these tyres are uh, they're really falling off now. And uh, you can see just when I'm behind Weber... There's just no grip compared to what Weber's got, so uh, I just need to uh, get this first stint out the way and get off these soft tyres because they are really not working for me. And uh, at this point I was almost considering uh, switching to the hards at the end of the race because uh, I just want to get off of these soft tyres and uh, I'm worried that the mediums are going to suffer from the same thing. But uh, we'll see how the second stint goes. And uh, yeah, our teammate is not that far behind us, so uh, we've really, we've really got no pace in this race. But uh, anyway, here comes. Uh, we've uh, confirmed a new strategy a bit slightly earlier, as uh, we're still just trying to defend from Verstappen, and uh, we're just constantly just uh, under attack. But uh, we seem to have just stabilised our pace slightly, and uh, we've uh, been managed, we've managed to break away from him a bit in uh, the recent past, but uh, one little mistake which uh, can happen quite frequently and uh, he's right on uh, right on the right again, so uh, that was good English, but uh, anyway finally we uh, drag the car through to the pit window and uh, get it stopped for the braking line just about and uh, into the box and It's because we're in the pit lane, Jeff. But uh, this is what I was talking about in uh, the Canada episode. I used the flashback in pit lane. And uh, I got uh, a speeding uh, penalty again. But uh, I d uh, this time I decided to use another flashback uh, to the same point. And it, uh, it didn't uh, give me the penalty the second time. 
So don't flash back uh, in pit lane, it's not a good idea. But uh, I did that to try and get rid of that. The reason I used it was to try to get rid of that uh, radio message about uh, the target position. But uh, yeah, that was weird. But uh, anyway, so if you if you do get that, use another flashback and uh, the penalty will go away. But uh, hopefully Codemasters will fix that uh, at some point. But uh, anyway, as we uh, on our outlap now, we need to set some purple sectors hopefully and get uh, get the undercut on Weber because uh, he was ahead of us. Let's use some of this energy. Increase the ERS deployment. And uh, that would certainly help if we've got uh, battery power to play with. But uh, we catch up to the queue of cars. The first one in that queue is Danny Rick. So let's go to the inside, down the inside into the first corner, completely missing uh, the exit. But uh, we get that move done anyway. Right, some information on Ricardo. They have some kind of mechanical problem. So the next car up ahead is Kevin Magnussen, and there's Pierre Gasly, so uh, he is still in this race. I did slightly say he's gone out of the race uh, before, but uh, we get past Magnussen down the uh, outside of Gasly and uh, run wide again, and uh, I'm just continuously just uh, overestimating the grip uh, of this car around Hockenheim. I'm not, not sure what it was this weekend, but Gasly and Magnussen are side by side, and Gasly's around again. What is going on with him in this race? That is the second spin for Pierre Gasly, and uh, he is just not having a good time uh, around the track uh, today. Magnussen left the space on the inside, and uh, it looked like Gasly just uh, misjudged it slightly. Let's have a look. Or oh, that's a bit hard to judge that one. Spins one way, spins the other, and uh, goes around. Here's the onboard from Ricardo. And it actually looked like he was pretty close to uh, having contact uh, with Gasly. But uh, I'm guessing uh, that surely is just a racing incident there. But uh, there was actually a pile of space uh, for Ricardo. Just was the uh, camera angle before made it look a, little, a bit closer than it was. But uh, anyway, as we are uh, dealing uh, with all that, Lucas Weber has come out of pits in front of us. And uh, we need to uh, try to catch him. We've got the DRS, so let's see what we can do into the hairpin. Can we uh, make a last minute move? Not quite, but uh, you can see the grip we have now on the mediums compared to him. We have uh, a lot more confidence uh, on the mediums than the softs, and we can uh, try to make a move uh, anytime soon. So now on the next lap, we go to the outside, into the hairpin, down the outside, and hopefully we'll be able to pull this off, but we run a little bit wide, and Weber is uh, back through on the inside there. But let's see what can we do around the outside here again. And uh, once again we'll be side by side through the middle sector to the inside of turn 8. And uh, he's still there on the outside. And uh, I just couldn't quite hold it around the outside there. And uh, Weber gets me back. But uh, we look at the race leader and uh, the battle for the lead. This is Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. And uh, Hamilton's slowing and his engine has blown up in the German Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton retires from his team's home race. The Mercedes-Benz has uh, given up and he will not finish this race. It was, it was Bottas in Austria and uh, now it's Hamilton's turn to have a mechanical failure. But uh, meanwhile, we're still battling away with Lucas Faber. We go down the outside into the hairpin once again. And uh, this time we just about hold it round the outside and we're going to be side by side into turn seven once again for the third time this race side by side through turn seven with Lucas Faber down the inside into turn eight and uh, he still holds it round the outside but uh, we're once again just going to not quite be able to hang it round the outside and uh, into the third sector now Faber has uh, held on to the position and he is proving extremely difficult uh, to overtake in this race and uh, you can tell he uh, he's a German and uh, he wants a top 5 finish uh, at his home race and he is going to fight for it uh, as much as anyone so we will need to uh, be a bit more creative if we uh, want to overtake him and on that topic uh, Max Verstappen is uh, also catching up and uh, he will be uh, He'll be wanting to uh, get uh, ahead, of, ahead of us to uh, try to chase down the Ferraris and Mercedes because uh, he had a dreadful qualifying 
and he'll be looking uh, to make up for that. So uh, we're looking in two directions now. Verstappen is uh, very close behind as we now look to the outside of Weber again. And uh, this time we try for a little bit of a switchback, but uh, couldn't quite get the drive there. Don't make me put that clip in again. All right. Literally every time Jeff says I have to put that clip in, it's just a rule. Now we go down the inside of Weber into turn 8, run a little bit wide and he's going to get us back around the outside and uh, I wasn't really sure how much space he was going to leave so I had to back out of it and uh, now Verstappen's right behind me. But uh, we are very close to Weber once again into the hairpin and uh, he was defending and we are just in an awkward position, couldn't really get down the inside from where we were. So uh, we're going to try and go for uh, the better exit. Couldn't quite get to the inside of turn 7, but are we going to send it into turn 8? Not quite, but uh, that was very close to uh, having a big dive there, but it was just not quite a slow enough corner to try to go for that uh, type of move. And uh, we are really uh, starting to hold up for Stappen, but uh, we, run, run, we run wide uh, through the last couple of corners and Verstappen gets through. So hopefully maybe Verstappen can uh, put pressure on Bay, but we look into the inside of Verstappen and we go down the inside, push him off the track just about there. But uh, we get the position back uh, from Verstappen. So uh, that, uh, and then we run wide and he gets through again. So uh, I really need to get that last sector sorted because uh, a few mistakes there have uh, cost uh, positions to, to Leclerc and uh, now to Verstappen twice. So uh, I need to get that sorted. But uh, as you can see here, Verstappen has just gotten away from me a bit and Weber is uh, miles up the road now. So uh, I've had a dodgy few laps and I'm really uh, starting to lose pace. So uh, the earlier pit stop maybe uh, is costing me some tyre performance now. But, uh, we're still faster than uh, the next car behind, which is uh, uh, Nico Hülkenberg in the Haas uh, at this point, trying to uh, recover from uh, a bad start or a bad qualifying at uh, his home race as well. There's uh, a lot of Germans in the field uh, in this season, three of them. Anyway, let's uh, focus uh, back on our race because Verstappen and Weber have uh, started battling in front of me and that will uh, hopefully invite me uh, back in uh, to this battle and hopefully we'll be able to uh, jump both of them uh, if uh, they're not paying attention. But uh, Verstappen has uh, woken up in this race and he's found a lot of speed so uh, it's going to be a tough order for uh, either myself or Weber uh, to beat him uh, in this race and uh, you can see Verstappen up there is uh, piling the pressure on Weber so uh, we move on and uh, it is Weber that we catch up to Verstappen is uh, up the road a bit so he has uh, managed to overtake Weber and Weber in fact has uh, lost DRS to him so uh, maybe the tyre wear on that McLaren, uh, probably not as good as the Red Bulls and that might be why Verstappen is uh, coming strong uh, the further we get into the race. But uh, anyway, we are right behind Weber to the outside towards uh, turn 8, but again just not quite wanting to make a move there. So we just have to sit behind and wait for uh, another opportunity. But uh, Weber is coming back towards us now, maybe he's turned his engine down. But uh, we'll see, we go to the outside once again, into the hairpin, but uh, we run in a little bit deep, try to get it stopped, and uh, that's not even the hairpin, that was uh, turn 2, but we get a good switch back onto the Parabolica uh, corner, and uh, we are through uh, on Lucas Weber there, so... Uh, We have been uh, flying through this race and uh, it's almost time for the second pit stop. We've dropped Weber, so uh, he's not going to be uh, too much of a threat to us, hopefully, uh, throughout the rest of this race. And uh, if that's the case, it might, might be a bit of a boring one to the end, but uh, I'm not going to complain about that too much. It has been uh, an exciting start, at, at the least, uh, to this race. So anyway, let's uh, get into the pit lane, get uh, some fresh tyres on. These ones are done, they've uh, done their job. New tyres on. Exit. Exit now. 
That looked very quick, 2.1 seconds. So uh, let's uh, get out of pit lane. We've got. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. We've got a pile of clean air, so let's just get on with the job here and get some good laps in. So we move on now and uh, pass the pit lane once again. Baber is in pits on this lap, so can we jump in? The battery is low on energy. Reduce ERS deployment. And we are ahead of Lucas Baber. That was him on the right hand side in pits there. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly is still stuck behind Kevin Magnussen, and that's a Williams car uh, up the road there, so uh, he won't be looking uh, at scoring points in this race, uh, will Pierre Gasly. But uh, at the same time, we are catching up uh, to the backmarkers in this race, the Renaults uh, and Pierre Gasly himself. So that is uh, pretty much the, uh, the only thing uh, left to deal with in this race, uh, unless Weber uh, can put up a challenge in this last stint will be uh, the backmarker cars so uh, eventually we catch up to uh, the first of them which is Daniel Ricciardo and uh, he almost uh, blocks us but uh, moves out of the way as we go around the outside but uh, that was a bit sketchy next up is Pierre Gasly and uh, he's dropped off the back of Magnussen uh, and the Williams car and uh, we've gotten around the outside of him and uh, I think Ricciardo actually got him at the same time uh, by Ricardo, I mean Weber. But uh, anyway, Weber is uh, actually putting the pressure on, so uh, maybe there will be uh, some excitement left uh, to play out in this race. We'll have to see uh, what Weber can do uh, throughout the rest of it. But uh, if you notice, we've actually moved a long way ahead in the race, and uh, Weber's through on the inside there. Can we get a switch back onto the straight as we uh, cut ahead? And uh, we go around the outside a little bit in the grass, but uh, we get uh, P5 back off of Lucas Weber. But uh, as I was saying, we skipped a long way ahead because there was really uh, nothing happening for quite a while. And uh, as we uh, try the cockpit camera, uh, Lucas Weber is through once again. So uh, I won't be trying that one uh, for too long. But uh, out of the hairpin. And uh, we've got a run on Lucas Weber trying to go through the outside. And he has hit us and we've got damage. And... That is uh, that was an ambitious move to go around the outside. We send one to the inside there. We uh, need to be ahead of him now. But uh, he didn't need to push us and uh, break the front be wing there. The front wing. You've taken some minor damage. And uh, that damage uh, will hurt us for the rest of the race. So we will need to do some uh, super aggressive defending. Uh, if we want to hold on to P5 now, the damage is going to slow us down massively. But uh, I can't pit for a new front wing or lose too much time. And it, it just won't be worth it. So we just got to deal with this damage for now. And uh, just hope that we can hold off Lucas Weber with uh, a limping car uh, for the rest of the race. But uh, we move on to the Parabolica. He's through on the outside. But we absolutely send a completely block off the line and uh, get the position back. And uh, that's the aggressive sort of defending uh, that I think we'll need if we want to uh, hold this position. There's not a lot of laps left, so uh, there's not a lot of opportunities. So we come back at him uh, into the hairpin once again. He's uh, getting through uh, with the DRS uh, on the start straight and uh, the second straight, but uh, whoever has DRS through Parabolica seems to uh, have the advantage uh, heading into the hairpin. So uh, it was me on that occasion and uh, it's Weber on this occasion but thankfully uh, we were able to, to uh, cover him off on the way into the corner and uh, he couldn't make a move there and it actually gets quite a bad exit and we we're safe for another lap but uh, next lap he's coming back at us once again down the outside into the hairpin but uh, once again we're just going to completely block off the line that he wants to use and uh, cover him off and uh, now with uh, only a couple laps left in the race we uh, run wide through the final corner and Babers through so we're going to need to get these first couple of corners absolutely perfect to uh, keep DRS almost centre uh, into the first corner, trying to take as much of uh, the inside curve there as possible. And uh, hopefully we are close enough to get the DRS and uh, make the move on through Parabolica into the hairpin. But uh, he actually got quite a good exit there, so this is going to be a, need to be a big dive if we want to get it done. You can see how far ahead he is. We're gaining but uh, it won't be enough by the time we get to the braking zone, but we go for it anyway. We send it down the inside. A lot of contact with Weber there, but we do get the move done. And Good. Good job. Nice overtake. Uh, Jeff 
has uh, no issues with that move. So uh, let's just uh, ignore that. That was uh, definitely uh, too far uh, to the uh, aggressive uh, side of the scale, but uh, we got away with it. And uh, just quickly to my point that I made uh, at the start of the video about Renault, they are absolutely nowhere in this race. So uh, they're really feeling the effects of uh, not upgrading the car too much in uh, the last few finishing positions uh, of this race. Uh, Ricardo and Magnussen uh, not uh, having a good day. But uh, I have a feeling we may have damaged uh, Lucas Weber's car with uh, our almighty dive bomb because uh, around this last lap he's really not been putting the pressure on and uh, he might be limping home as well. So uh, that's is uh, I guess a bit of a, a relief for us and we can uh, finish off the race now without uh, too much pressure from behind. We've uh, had to be very aggressive throughout this race but uh, as we come around the final corner we are going to come home for a fifth position in the German Grand Prix. Nice work, you did well today. I think the boss will be happy with that one. Yeah, they'll be happy as long as front wings aren't too expensive for this team. over the competition today well this was a real team victory they put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track the driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection a shining example of how f1 really is a team sport here come our winners now a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by ferrari their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. So it's the Ferraris 1 and 3 in this race. Valtteri Bottas bringing home P2 for Mercedes at uh, the Mercedes home race. But uh, their race was undone when uh, Hamilton uh, had his DNF. No Mercedes 1-2 this time. It's Ferrari on top. So, let's review the driver's standings. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Is it it's me? It's got to be Lando Norris, oh. hasn't it? Smooth, confident, and assured. I've got no doubt that he and his team are going to be over the moon with his performance today. Let's move on to the constructors. Ferrari take the lead at the top of the table. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. I will because uh, if I don't, I'll lose my drive. All right, so that was uh, a pretty exciting race. And uh, Gasly looking at uh, that still 8th uh, in the championship not able to uh, overtake Sergio Perez another bad race uh, for Pierre Gasly so uh, I don't know maybe Red Bull will be looking for another new driver uh, as there were a few rounds ago but uh, anyway let's see uh, what happens uh, over the course of the next few races but uh, anyway looking at uh, the constructors we're still third Ferrari is uh, actually in the lead of the constructors so uh, they've been uh, doing, playing the consistent game. Mercedes have uh, come on strong in the last few races, but uh, Ferrari uh, still just have the edge uh, at this point. And uh, that DNF from Hamilton made a big difference there. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? Well, I can't say, but... Uh, it was uh, a really good race today, and uh, after the first in, I was worried about the tyres uh, overheating, but uh, it came good in the end. You had a pretty close finish with Lucas. What's it like racing a former teammate? Yeah, our racing is uh, been really good in general, but uh, a bit close that time. Appreciate your time. So, the end of another race weekend, and it is another top five finish for us. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't say it, but uh, I think I put it on the screen that uh, Sergio Perez uh, did not finish this race. He uh, retired with a mechanical failure, and uh, he didn't uh, score any points. So, uh, unfortunate for him, but uh, we continue to uh, 
continue to fight with Red Bull for the constructors uh, third place we're, we're not going to catch Mercedes and Ferrari for uh, the top two but uh, we've uh, got a good chance of third and halfway through the season we're, we're, we're still in the fight for that interview from Lucas it was more like dodging cars in Formula 1 today, wasn't it? Haha, <laughs> good one. It is always upsetting when there are so many collisions during an event, but it can be hard to predict. As talented as everyone is on track, there are so many minor things that can result in a crash, many of which can be put down entirely to bad luck. We all underestimated you, didn't we? Huh, I wouldn't say that. Coming into this weekend, I didn't really know what to expect, honestly. I think I'm in a lucky position working with a team that is extremely dedicated and know exactly what I need to push for these great results. You had a pretty close finish with Mark Player. What's it like racing a former teammate? I find it really helps me keep motivation on track. My ex-teammate is definitely a force to reckon with on the track, but also a good friend of mine, and I find myself wanting to try to stay competitive with him at every opportunity. So now to R&D, and I had a brief look at the uh, major uh, upgrade, but I want an upgrade to come in for Hungary, so we have a, at least a slim chance of getting that fourth place in qualifying. So uh, I even had a look at Aero briefly, but uh, in the end I decided to go for the weight redistribution upgrade over the tyre wear upgrade because uh, we need the qualifying pace. So uh, hopefully that was the right choice, and hopefully we'll get that upgrade in for Hungary. But uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Engine off.